Hey, everybody. Should be live here. Do me a favor, please, and give me a one in the chat if you can hear me. And I'm going to share my screen just a second and give me a two in the chat if you can see my screen. I'll get rid of my eye saver so it's not all orange looking. Cool, cool. Okay, looks good. And so I'm sorry for last week. If um, if you didn't catch my email, I like half an hour before the the I was scheduled to go live, my power went out, and uh, I, there's a storm came through, and so I had to like I had to put a hot spot on my phone and be able to send out an email saying that the power had gone out. So. Sorry about that, but, you know, I kind of live in the forest in Florida, and it's hurricane season, and, well, even when it's not a hurricane, we get these big thunderstorms, so all it takes is one tree branch to fall on a power line and power's out, so, so, um, appreciate you bearing with me on that, but today we are going to do the thing that we are supposed to do last week, so, cool, good to see you, Jade, I appreciate it, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. And so let's go ahead and get into it. So if you were if you were here two weeks ago, we created an AI generated YouTube ad video. And so we're going to continue from there. We're going to use that ad video and we're going to turn it into an actual ad campaign. So that's what this is right here. So if you're not familiar with the background, this is a what we're doing is promoting an affiliate program that is for getting a, a free tax credit for people that that did not that were self-employed in 2020 or 2021 and qualified for a free tax credit from covid from the irs so this is you know this is us only here um so if you are not familiar with that then i'm gonna i'm just gonna play the ad this is the ad that we created two weeks ago which will kind of give you an idea of what we're going after here I, I think the sound doesn't work but you can just read the text if you were self-employed or received a 1099 in the years 2020 or 2021, have you already claimed your self-employed tax credit from the IRS? You might not have heard about this yet, but as part of the government's COVID relief package, they offered up to $32,020 in tax credits for people who were self-employed. Now, this doesn't apply to people who worked a traditional job on W-2, but if you were self-employed on 1099 during 2020 or 2021, then chances are you're eligible. You must have been affected by COVID in some way. Could be that you got sick yourself, you couldn't work because of lockdowns, or you had to take off work to take care of someone else who was sick during that time. Now, if you didn't already claim it, that's okay. There's still a little bit of time left if you heard it. And in fact, we've made it super easy for you to claim your tax credit without having to do all the complicated tax stuff yourself. You just give us a little bit of info and we'll handle the entire filing process for you. It takes five minutes, and in four, six weeks, you'll get a check from the IRS for anywhere from $1,000 to $32,000. The exact amount depends on how much you earn during those two tax years, but just about everyone who got a 1099 will qualify for something. Want to see how much you qualify for? Just click the button that's somewhere around this video and fill out the application on the next page. It's totally free, and it takes five minutes. We don't charge you a penny until you have your money from the IRS in hand, and we just take a small percentage of that. So if you're interested, click the button to get the full details and fill out the application. This will not be around for long, so don't miss out on potentially thousands of dollars of free money that you're already entitled to from the government. You may never see this again. So if you're interested, now is your opportunity. Click the button. Fill out the quick form, and we'll get you your check from the IRS in no time. So that's the video. And first thing I'm going to do is upload it to YouTube. So I'll go over to, I have a, a YouTube channel that's just dedicated to ads here, which, by the way, if you, if you want to run ads on YouTube, you need to have a YouTube channel, but you don't have to have anything on your YouTube channel. So if you just start a blank YouTube channel, if you have a Google account, like if you have a Gmail or if you have an Android, then you already have a Google account. You can start a YouTube channel for free. It takes like no time at all. And you you don't have to get subscribers. You don't have to get people to watch your videos at all. 
In fact, I put all my, my ad videos as unlisted here. So that's what I'm gonna do here. This, this channel exists solely just to put ads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit create, upload videos, and I will choose my, where is it? This video right here, that's the one that we, that we just watched. and give it a minute to upload. I'll give it a title that's just something that's easy for me to remember. And I like to, I usually like to put a date on it just so I remember when it's from. And then not made for kids. Skip all this, skip, put as unlisted and save. That's it. That's it for creating the video. That was easy. And now we're going to actually create our ad campaign. So there are a few steps to this, which come to think of it, I made some notes about like how I was going to present this because there is, um, there, there is a trick to this, like to, there's some, there's more to this than I'm going to show you here because it's, fairly complicated, but I'm going to give you the, the most important parts. Where'd it go? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is define our audience. So, and we made it define, normally I would define several audiences just for the sake of time here. I'm just going to create one, but we want to find people that were self-employed in 2020 or 2021. Now that's probably going to be a little bit difficult to find directly. So we're going to leave our, our targeting somewhat broad. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go, this is the YouTube ads dashboard or the Google ads dashboard, by the way, the Google ad or YouTube ads are a part of Google ads. So everything that you do in YouTube ads is under the Google ads dashboard. And so I'm going to go into tools and where is it? Shared library audience manager. They keep changing stuff. So I forget where stuff is located. They keep moving things around, but it's audience manager. And so we're going to define an audience. We're going to define who we want to see our ads. So I'm going to create a new one here. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Audiences. It's under audiences, not remarketing lists. And create new. And it's going to be, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what they've got before we give it a name. So there are custom segments, which are things that we can define ourselves with keywords. And then there's this interests and detailed demographics, which are kind of the, the audiences that Google already has ready for you. So what I normally do is I start with what Google already has. And if I find something that seems like a good fit in there, then maybe I'll use that. If I don't, then I'll go and create a custom segment instead. So let's just take a look through what we got in here. So if we go to browse, in market means what are people currently looking for? Which is super powerful because if you can find a audience of people that are currently looking for the thing that you have to offer, well, you're golden. So let's see, there is there's business services. So it could be that that would be worthwhile because anybody that's looking for business, well, not anybody, but a lot of people that are looking for business services are probably business owners. So that has potential. What else? Employment. Wonder if we can find gig working under employment. Temporary and seasonal jobs. 
That, yeah, temporary and seasonal jobs would probably include things like Uber and DoorDash. So that that's a possibility. Let's just see what else they get. We've got here. Okay, none of those other ones really make much sense. Life events, somebody that just changed jobs. That doesn't really work here. Detailed demographics. Oh, we have some employment. Industry. Nah, I don't think that works. And then we have affinity, which is more like what are people interested in? as opposed to in market is what are people currently looking for? Affinity means what are people interested in, interested in. So vehicles and transportation, there's taxi service users, but that wouldn't be people that work in Uber. Yes, yeah, so those don't really make much sense. So, okay, so the ones that I think might work are business services. And where did I go with that one? Business services, right? And then there's a whole bunch of different business services that you could check, which by the way, for my, my main service that I offer is doing YouTube ads for people. And so for people that are looking for, who are in market for advertising and marketing services, that's exactly my audience, right? I I like that one. I can even drill down further. Um, and this is email marketing, SEO, SEM. Neither of those really match, but I, I check that box and that works really well for me. But for this one is a little bit more broad. So probably just business services in general would be a good one. Or what was the other one that we thought would be good was, well, it was temporary jobs, right? So I would, I would probably run two separate ads, one with each of those audiences, and then maybe, maybe I do another one with a custom segment here. I could go to new segment and I could see any people with any of these interests or purchase intentions <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I could say like gig work. I could say drive for Uber, say drive for DoorDash. <clears throat> and <clears throat> according to this, <clears throat> we get 10 billion to 1 trillion weekly impressions. So this is a nice, big, broad audience. So, so that would work pretty well as well. And so I would call this something like gig work intent. Although the, the one difficult part here is that we don't want people that, that are just starting to drive for Uber or, or DoorDash or whatever. We want people that were driving for Uber or DoorDash back in 2020, 2021. So, um, I mean, if we put like maybe like highest paying gig work, highest paying gig work, then maybe those would be people that have, you know, have been doing it for a while, but they want to find like, how can they, how can they get paid the most or, um, or we could even do like how to make more from Uber, something like that, right? As opposed to like how to become Uber driver, that's not what we want because the person that we want already knows how to be an Uber, Uber driver. Or maybe there's those like they, they have that kind of Uber equipment where they have those signs in the back that tell you about like, please leave me a review and that kind of thing. How to, or like Uber, uh oh, 
happened there. I don't know. I'm going to ignore it for now. Um, how to get the best tips for Uber. Something like that. So that would work too. I'll, and I'll call it, instead of gig work intent, I'll say... I'll say Uber like Uber improvement keywords. And so it's still telling me there's a whole bunch of impressions, so that's good. And so okay, so I'll go ahead and save that and that's going to be a new segment that I can use in my targeting. And so, okay, so that's the custom segment, and I'll, I'll name the audience the same as the segment, probably. Improvement keywords. Oh, one thing that I can do that'll help just a little bit is I can filter by age. So somebody who's 18 now would have been 15 three years ago, right? So they couldn't possibly have been an Uber driver. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at 25. That will help a little bit. And then I can also do household income, which is, is helped somewhat. So somebody that's, that's doing gig work now, and by the way, this works for gig workers and self-employed business owners, right? So those are two very different categories. And if I wanted to try to try to reach both of them, I would run separate ads to try to reach each group, right? But here I'm mostly going towards the gig workers because there are more of them and I figure they're probably easier to reach. So household income, if you're driving for Uber, chances are you're not top 10 household income. So I'm going to say like, like 31% to lower 50%. Like we'll get, we'll leave out the top, the top 30% of income earners because chances are they're not going to be doing these kind of, this kind of work. And okay, and then I, I might put that in my name too. So like, uh, exclude top thirty percent income, and I'll hit save. And there we go. So now I have my audience. Now that I have my audience, I'm going to go ahead and create my ad campaign. So click plus to create a new campaign here. Um, normally I would actually, I'd just copy one of my existing campaigns cause it's a little faster and like it, there's a bunch of settings that I don't have to set, but since I'm showing you from scratch, I'll just, I'll just start a new one. So my goal is leads. And okay. And here is, since I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send people directly to my affiliate page, which is, which is, where is it here? It's under gig worker solutions, which by the way, if you want to affiliate for this, then just let me know, send me your name and email address and I'll, I'll sign you up as an affiliate. But it's going to be this one, the unique SETC landing page. So I'm going to send people directly to that. Now there is, when I'm sending directly to an affiliate page, there's one thing that's kind of a disadvantage with, with YouTube ads in that I don't, I can't like track when somebody signs up and then send that information back to Google, back to the ads dashboard, which is helpful because if I could do that, then the ad, the ad algorithm will say, okay, this person just signed up. So I'm going to try to find more people that are similar to this person, right? And when they find more people that sign up, then they start to notice patterns of what kind of people are likely to sign up and it improves the, the ad performance over time. So if you have your own offer, then you can do that. With an affiliate offer, sometimes you can't. 
Sometimes you can. It depends on what affiliate offers. Sometimes they have a setup where they can allow you to do that. But that's a little bit more technical than I want to go into here. And I haven't I haven't even looked at whether or not this site allows that. But for the sake of of not totally confusing and overwhelming everybody, we're going to skip that for today. So, OK, so back to my ads dashboard. I'm going for leads. That's my goal here. And uh, I'm just going to leave that as is. That's fine. I would change this like I, I was just talking about. If I could actually track conversions, then I would change this. But since I can't, I'm just going to leave as is. And then I'm going to create a video campaign, which is a YouTube campaign. Click continue. And I'll give it a name. So I use I usually like to name my campaign. Well, the whole point of a name is just to reference it later, right? To know what it's doing without having to dig into the settings. So like I put the, the important things that I'm putting about my settings, I put that in the name. So for example, I'll say like SATC AI ad video, and then I'll put my, like my targeting is, what was it like Uber improvement audience. And yeah, that's probably good. I'm not gonna put anything anything else very much. And then location is United States and I'll do all United States. If I wanted to target a local area, I could enter another location. I could do that. I could put multiple countries if I wanted to, but United States is the default. So I'm just going to leave it. Language is English. That's good. Maximize conversions. And by the way, a lot of gig workers are Hispanic. So if I wanted to create another ad that's the same as this, but do it in Spanish and set the language to Spanish, then that might might get really excellent results, especially because the there is less competition for the Spanish speaking market. Um, OK, so I'm going to maximize conversions. I usually put my budget to five bucks a day to begin with just I like to start with very small budgets just to test how it's working before I go and scale it. And networks. I don't know why they even give you this to click on because they don't let you choose. The video partners on the Google Display Network are is basically really crappy traffic that they like everybody knows that it's bad and so they just make you do it. They don't they don't give you a choice. There is a workaround actually, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to right now, but there's, this is like, not all of the YouTube ads show on YouTube. They also have these display network partners. So that's other sites that have videos on them that I don't even know what sites they are, but they, they perform badly in my experience. So I find a way to exclude them. And additional settings, eligible devices. I would like to turn off TV screens just because you can't click a link on a TV screen. I'll leave everything else. And then what else? Okay, so that's it at the campaign level. I think we're good on that. Now we have an ad group. So there, there are three levels in a YouTube ads campaign. There's the campaign, then there's an ad group, and then there are ads. So you can have multiple ad groups per campaign, and you can have multiple ads per ad group. I like to keep it simple and just have one ad group, one ad per campaign. So makes life a lot easier. makes it a lot easier to, to navigate your campaigns, especially if you have a bunch of them, like I usually do. So I'm going to add an audience. This is the audience that we just created. If I search it, Uber improvement keywords, that's exactly it. And optimized targeting is a feature that will, basically you're giving the algorithm permission to show your ads to people that are not in your target audience. 
But the idea is that it starts with your target audience, it starts to notice patterns, and then it can find people that are outside your target audience that are likely to convert. And because my target audience is, is not, that, not that well targeted in this case, and it's, it's kind of more specific than I would like because it's only targeting Uber, right? Whereas I would like to also talk to people that are in DoorDash or Amazon or whatever other gig working services. I'm actually gonna leave this on. Most of the time I turn it off, like for my own offers, I usually turn it off. But for this one, I think it makes sense to leave it on. This is something you can test, by the way. You can make two copies of it and leave it on in one and turn it off on, on the other and see how they perform compared to each other. But for now, I'm gonna leave it on. Advanced settings, there's, okay, there's nothing I can put there. A lot of these options are like stuff that you used to be able to do and then they decided, no, you can't do it anymore. But they still show it for some reason. And then, okay, my YouTube video. So now I'm just gonna go over to my channel. This is a video that I uploaded. I'll get the link for it and I will paste it in here. So this is my ad video. Now it's gonna ask for my URL. So this is where does the person go when they click on my ad? So that's, I'm gonna get that from here. This is from the affiliate page and it's this, my unique SETC landing page link. So I'm gonna copy that and paste that into my final URL to make sure this HTTPS works properly. That looks good. And then leave this blank. Call to action. I'll say, I usually just say learn more. You get a choice. I can say sign up if I want. I, I normally say learn more. It's just kind of less investment, less commitment. And then a headline. The headline doesn't really matter a whole lot. It's gonna be what they see down here. And you can see, by the way, you can see like what it looks like on a phone versus a computer. So I'm gonna put for a headline. Oh, that's interesting. They give, they give me a bunch of uh, recommendations here. So maybe self-employed tax credit. Just use one of the recommendations. That's kind of cool. That's new. They, they just started doing that. I haven't seen that one before. <clears throat> and then a long headline. Well, they won't give me any recommendations there. So I could say something like, if you were self-employed in 2020, 2021, you might qualify for free money from the IRS. And then, and then I like to go up here and see, okay, what does that look like? So yeah, self-employed tax credit is, it gets cut off on the phone, but that's where the, the headline goes. <clears throat> if I look at it on a computer, it's here also gets cut off. This is a TV screen, but I don't, I'm not using TV screens anyway. Although, yeah, now they've actually put these QR codes on the TV screen. So you might not exclude the TV anymore because they'll, now somebody, they'll show the QR code and somebody can scan it. But um, I've done that a little bit in the past and not really had great luck with it. So I don't know. I usually, I, I have better luck with with phones and computers. Okay, so that's good. And then a, a description. So, oh, and they give me some, some AI recommendations for this. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, upload, unlock up to $32,220 with the self-employed tax credit. Nice, so used to be I had to write these myself, <laughs> but now it just writes them for me, that's nice. So I, I really don't, think very much about these, the like the headlines, they don't really matter that much. So don't obsess over that. Now I can see, and there's multiple formats by the way too. So like this is a, 
is an ad that you have to click on as opposed to one that just comes up before you watch your video that you can skip, right? And so you're running both of these. With any YouTube ads campaign nowadays, they, they make you do both. You can't choose to do one, but not the other. So this is what it looks like here if you were self-employed in 2020. And that's, actually, I don't like that a whole lot. I might change that. Maybe I could say free money for from the IRS for self employed or 1099 gig workers, something like that. And then it's still, it, it cuts off, which I don't like. But I'm being picky here. I normally wouldn't be. I could say maybe instead of free money from the IRS, I see free tax credit so I can make it shorter. Free tax money for self-employed or 10 nine. Okay, so that's good. Like that's, that's would get somebody interest and maybe they'd click on it. I really like most of your of your results are going to come from these ads, like the in-stream ads, they're called the ones that, that just start playing before a video and you can skip them after five seconds. But since you're forced to do these, these display ads anyway, you might as well make them good. At least put a, you know, a minute or two of effort into them. Don't go too crazy anyway. So I'm happy with that. And Yep, and that is about it. You can put multiple headlines and like multiple calls to action and stuff, and then it will test them to see which one works the best. I usually just put one because that stuff really doesn't matter a whole lot, but it doesn't hurt to put some more if you want to. And then I'll hit create campaign and confirm that it's me. Okay. Yes, yeah, super annoying. Okay, and so I have to go through this whole stupid rigmarole where I go through my phone. And so let me, give me a second, I'll do that. Didn't used to do this to me, but now it does it to me constantly. And so now like, okay, I have to go and open my settings app in Android and tap on Google. Manage my Google account. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Just a second. Verifying my identity. That's what's going on. Okay. Okay, so that's done. I'll hit create campaign again. And it works. Sweet. And then, okay, if I go over to my campaigns view, which is the what I treat as like my default view, then here is my new campaign here. And it says bid strategy learning, but if I click into it, if I click on the campaign and I click on the ad group, then it shows me here's the ad and it says pending under review. So what that means is that the Google compliance team or whoever they will, they are, will look at my ad, they'll look at my landing page and they'll say, does this meet all of our, our community standards? Like, is it violating any of our rules? And if not, then they'll approve it and it'll start running. If so, then they'll tell me it's disapproved and give me some reason for why it's disapproved. And I'm linking directly to an affiliate page, which I think Google frowns upon. So they may disapprove that. I'm not sure just because this is this like gig worker solutions is not it's not like a well-known affiliate platform if this was clickbank or jvzoo or something like that and i was linking directly to one of those pages 
then it would disapprove it because it would recognize that as an affiliate platform. But this is, this may be an exception. So I'm gonna try it, see what happens. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. But um, if it doesn't work, then what I would do is create a page that's like a bridge page. It's just a very, very simple page that I send people to from the ad and then they click on a link in that page and then they go here. So that way I'm, I'm not breaking Google's rules because I'm not sending people directly to the affiliate site, but it's only one step in between. So it works basically the same way. So that's it for now. I will, I think I'll, I'll let this run for a week and see if it works, you know, it may work, it may not. Um, I'm, I didn't really put a whole lot of effort into this. So I, I won't be too heartbroken if it doesn't work, but if it does, then that'd be cool. So that's it for today. Anybody got any questions, Any anything that like you didn't understand? I know I went through a lot here. If so, feel free to let me know in the chat. And then once it does start running, then I'll be able to see some, like some numbers, right? Like of how it's doing. So like this is a, a ad that I do have running. And so I can see here's number of impressions and number of interactions and how much I spent, et cetera. Steven says, is there a way to test ad to see if the link is working? Yeah, that's a great idea actually. Um, and yeah, you should definitely do that. <laughs> you click on this, click on the campaign, click on the ad group, and then you can preview it. And this is, okay, so you can see what it looks like and I can click on the link. Uh, it's not working. Oh, or I can preview the ad on YouTube. Let's do that instead. So this is gonna show me what it looks like. And if I click on learn more, then it says this is an intermediate preview page that confirms your click can be successfully recorded by Google. This preview will not be seen. Oh, and then it automatically redirects me to the page, which is, is what people will see. And sure enough, this is the landing page that I want people to go to. If you look up here where it says source equals, this is the part that says that this is my affiliate link specifically. So if somebody signs up, then I get credit. So good question. Cool. Well, I don't see any more questions. So thank you for listening. Good to see you guys. And I will see you all next week. Bye, everybody.